Good afternoon, everyone. As the magnetic field on the sun decreases going into our new grand solar minimum, we will begin to see effects on the Earth as galactic cosmic rays increase low cloud cover across our planet. Atmospheric compression events is what we're beginning to see right now. This is a wrap up of the beginning of 2015 up to July. Bogota, Colombia and Quito, Ecuador, equatorial areas receiving three feet of hail each a month apart. Unusual earthworms raining down from the skies over Norway onto the glaciers in three different places. Incredible hailstorms in Sydney. Four typhoons forming at the same time, but they're on different sides of the equator. Out of season completely. Unprecedented, never recorded, back to the 1300s, coming into the Arabian Sea Peninsula. Check out the size of this hail in Texas. And that is a river of hail in Saudi Arabia. If you're new to the concept of galactic cosmic rays causing lower cloud formation, you'll want to start with Svensmark. Check out the movie The Cloud Mystery. It'll explain it in detail. Basically, when the sun is at a magnetic high during a grand solar maximum, our Earth's magnetic field is incredibly strong, deflecting cosmic rays. But when we get into a grand solar minimum, which we're going into right now, our magnetic field on the Earth is weaker, which allows more cosmic rays to penetrate the atmosphere. And the effect would be greater cloud cover between 15 and 20,000 feet across the planet. There's a direct relationship between the magnetic strength and the amount of galactic cosmic rays penetrating our atmosphere. Even NASA admits since 2009 it's the most cosmic rays ever recorded and there's been a 20% increase over the last few years. This will undulate the jet stream so whenever you hear the news talk about polar vortex, this is the direct result of a decreased magnetic field across our planet. A little bit better graphic and visual here. Generally storms are going to be much, much more intense. Winds will be stronger. Just gigantic Areas where updrafts will pull in, you'll get these ice pockets in the sky. That's what's been damaging the aircraft across the planet. As you see again and again, these emergency landings, they're running into this in the skies. Back here on the ground, start to see more and more as we have record floods, 100-year floods, 200-year floods, 500-year floods, consistently in the news. 50 centimeters of hail, that's two feet of hail in Sydney. This is the approximate size of the hailstones jumping through the social media. This is not really normal when you get this deep of hail enveloping a city. The hailstones were different shapes as well. The aftermath, traffic locked up. Belarus, this is a two minute duration from here to total darkness in two minutes when the storm came in. Earthworms raining down from the skies over Norway. There's been three different places where they found earthworms that have come down and landed on the glaciers by the thousands. So somewhere they're being picked up and transported over into the glaciers. This is a map of South America. Notice Colombia and Ecuador right on the equator. Amazing Bogota most hail ever. Two feet of ice falling out of the skies into Bogota. That was in March. Cleanups underway. Depth in the streets for you there to take a look at. It's 8 o'clock in the morning. The grand historic ice fall. Now this is exactly what the atmospheric compression ring out looks like when it's coming through. It's actually ringing out. There's so much moisture and extra density in the clouds. If we go back to 2007, Bogota had another huge gigantic hailstorm as well. Quito this year. This is February. A month prior to the Bogota storm, as you can see in Quito, the streets, how deep the ice was there. Back to the flash floods, everywhere across Europe, you've heard over the last two or three years, it's just historic flooding. 300-year floods, 200-year floods, century mark floods. That's what these events are all about. We haven't repeated a solar minimum in 400 years, so when we go forward, that should be the norm, breaking 300-year rainfall records. 400 year rainfall records coming now that the intensity will up a notch, if you will. Look for snow records to break in the 300 year range. 
the ocean should be cooling a little bit, so there'll be a decrease in hurricanes and typhoons as we go into a La Nina and the Atlantic multidecadal oscillation turns cool. That's why you haven't seen so many hurricanes in the Atlantic because the ocean is going cool on a regular cyclical basis. Massive dust storms coming through the Middle East, Beijing, China, Bondi Beach, you get 75 mile an hour winds and that's no typhoon, that is just a high pressure system. Size of the hail, you know when you get these massive updrafts they can pull up two pound pieces of hail back into the sky again and again and again. Absurd amounts of over precipitation of something like seven times normal on this weather map back in the same time in May when these storms occurred. Peshawar in Pakistan, third worst mini cyclone ever in the history of the country. And there I looked in that record and it goes back 1,300 years and this is third worst they've ever recorded. Torrential rains in Peshawar, they're just not used to these kind of floodwaters rolling through and winds. Flash floods in Saudi Arabia, not really floods, but flash hail. Deserts and rivers of hail just normally don't go together. Looking at the global tropical cyclones from 1851 up to 2008, you don't get typhoons forming on both sides of the equator in different opposite seasons. This is rare. The extreme rarity of a single storm in the Arabian Peninsula is something. But when you have two storms back to back after two weeks, that is not ever recorded. The Arabian traders going back through this time using the Arabian Peninsula and Red Sea along the trade routes at that time, the records go back to about 1300. Actually 1278 is the earliest recorded weather anomaly that I could find. There's never been any recording of two storms ever in the history of recording weather in the Arabian Peninsula that there's been two. That's back to a 700 year event. The Peshawar event is a 1200 year event so you can start to see we're getting back into greater amounts of time. Cyclone Chapla, Cyclone Meg, these are the ones that rolled through the peninsula. When you're dumping a year's worth of rain in 48 hours you're going to have massive flooding. It's a track of the storms here in case you were unfamiliar and the news didn't report on that, which it probably wouldn't have unless you were a regional. This is the flooding they're experiencing throughout the cities and towns. And our last graphic here, rainfall for those of you in the United States takes 10 millimeters to equal one centimeter. It takes two and a half centimeters to equal one inch. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you see that something's happening with our atmosphere due to cosmic ray increases, having a direct effect creating lower cloud cover. You are going to see more and more snow records shattered, ice build up across the Arctic and the Antarctic, and record floods going back three to four hundred years consistently from this point forward. Everything will intensify around 2018 and 19 winter into the cool. But right now we're going to see atmospheric disturbances. You know it's here. It's begun. It's on a 400 year pattern. I encourage you to look back through history into the Maunder minimum, the Oort minimum. And as always, please remember to subscribe to my channel Adapt2030 and pass this through your social media networks.